Hello and welcome to session number 71 of Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. Hey guys! Hey yo. Hello! Hello! We are still missing a Jory, and today we're also missing a Sid. So sadness all around, but we're gonna make this work anyway. How are you guys feeling? Everything all good? Good week? Decent. More Nervous. excited for this mm -hmm. section. Mm -hmm. I'm also nervous. <laughs> all right. Here we are. Here's our table. There's... <laughs> um... There, there were some technical difficulties when setting up the table and a lot of things have been like erased and brought back into existence. So, in theory, everything should be good and stable, but if anything breaks for seemingly no reason, uh, it's my fault. I am so sorry. Uh, with that being said, do -do 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 -do. I'm moving my camera around, I'm going in little circles, and I'm zooming in on Matt. What? Guess what time it is? It's my moment. It's your moment. Time to reveal the, the professor was actually a lich the whole time. My goodness. Before we get to that, though, it's it's recap time. Before the lich part. Before the <laughs> lich part. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's do it. So uh, at start of the session. We continued onwards, uh, following Arryn to our destination, with Runamela in tow, clinging constantly to Arryn's arm and vying for his attention, uh, as definitely not a cat dragons do. Uh, as the journey goes on and Runamela continues bringing bigger and bigger game, Arryn looks more sickly by the day until eventually one of his eyes falls out, which he <laughs> sighs at, brushes off, and then plants back into his socket. Uh, the group seems to accept this as the current reality and ignores it entirely. Uh, at one point, Runamella states that the climate is getting too cold, and even with the professor giving her flaming spheres to roll around, fireball baths, and a fire-breathing tressum to play with, uh, she eventually heads back to her homeland, leaving parts of her topaz with us uh, as a memento, and the group promises to visit her again one day. Uh... And then, while uh, trudging through the snow, on another day, Pip notices a gift from his granny containing a single detached Catella wing, uh, a gray rock with a faint metallic red streak, and a note, uh, all of which he keeps secret from the party. Uh, also, his feetsies freeze. Uh, Aww. Arn knits him some shoes, and then they bond over their shared chains, and Pip tells him of his tasks to un unravel the noose and free himself from granny. Tekka then talks to Pontifex about the upcoming potential reunion with his parents, and they contemplate the unknown. Uh, Tekka reveals the existence of his mother and father, whom he claims to love dearly, and that he was an unwanted child that would have been thrown to the ocean had it not been for them. Uh, he shows Pontifex a letter from his own mother with a sketch of himself on the back. Uh, Tekka also inquires about the incident that called Pontifex away, his thoughts and reactions to the news about the goat and how it might connect to the lady. Uh, the two discuss their past trials, their growth as people, and their futures, with Pontifex closing the conversation with a promise to Tekka. A vow to see the journey to the end, and to save the lady and the group's loved ones, regardless of what comes regarding the parents and the goat. Uh, then Pip has a quizzical encounter with Granny in his dreams, speaking in her usual riddles and poems, and performs some Granny magic. Uh, Pip revels in the feeling of warmth and tenderness coming from Granny and grows increasingly suspicious with how caring she is being <laughs> without him having completed all of the tasks. Uh, his paranoia is present but unfounded in the moment and he simply accepts this dream world as the ideal version of what it is. Uh, <laughs> together, him and Granny fly to the southeast at a bewildering speed to a place that feels safe and welcoming. And they fly over land, across sea, over land again, and then over the sea again, uh, before arriving at an island with a series of cliffs huddled together as if for warmth, and a storybook city of stacked houses connected by bridges on those cliffs. Uh, he then goes on a beautiful little adventure through Talon's Reach where he meets and quote-unquote talks to the myriad of bird people inhabitants. Uh, his adventure culminates in a final tea party with Granny, where he's told about Granny's sister, Aster, and her not allowing her to come to harm, but her pet werewolf is fair game. 
uh, and is left with a flower in his hand as he fades away from her and from the world of dreams. Um, as we all collectively wake from our long rests, Pip finds the flower still in his hand. Uh, the group awakes to find Pip more distant and withheld, who eventually sobs about not knowing where home is to Tekka and is carried throughout the day. Uh, as we get closer, we come across a cave and Pip informs the party about his granny's wishes, her sister in the cave under the mountain, and the supposed curse on the mountain. Uh, Pontifex suggests taking our time, diverting to another goal, uh, deflecting Minnie's parents, etc., etc., and the group somewhat agrees, but mostly denies him. Uh, Pip has the idea of using his bag of rocks to get animal scouts, uh, but in a strange twist of fate, a series of stone stairs uh, apparate and spiral seemingly endlessly into the sky. Uh, hilariously enough, we then ignore the cave entirely and follow the stairs <laughs> into the sky for days because it's cool. Uh, until we reach the very anticlimactic top where nothing is there. Uh, a draconic nostalgia hits the professor, and the group all collectively learns Pythagoras' theorem, and we launch ourselves by a bird <laughs> to the top of the rib. Uh, after a short journey up the last bit, we find the cabin, Pontifex knocks on the door, and is met by the embrace of his father. Indeed. Indeed. Okay, thank you for the recap. Uh, as a mm -hmm. like a small clarification, it's uh, um, the the name of the sister of uh, Granny uh, is at least that one is currently unknown, and it's unclear who Aster is. Oh, oh I thought that was the sister. Oh. Mm -mm. It's, a, it's a separate name. Uh, also, I don't, I don't know if you want to elaborate uh, any more on that. Um... You want to add anything to it? Um, oh, we're good. Pip's a, Pip is a giant Nighthawk now. And yeah. There you go. And then can I can I give this inspiration to, to Austin? If you want. Is that like allowed? But why? Because that's what was stated last time. I was given the, the chain inspiration from Brook. And I said I would pass mine along to you, who also Aww. has no inspiration. Oh. How sweet. And because I don't need them very much. <laughs> yeah, you I just... make the DM roll, not me. Exactly. Is that that's true? I will oh, yeah. accept oh. it. Stone Aww. stairs. You know, and it feels more fitting that you get the stone stairs inspiration. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what a gift. You just owe me your second born. <laughs> Wait, why am I second born? I don't want the first. That's the trial run. Oh, yeah. I want the refined version. Gotcha. I'll let Alora know. <laughs> That's really threatening. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My friend uh, in my DD group claims that he demands our second born because he thinks we're gonna screw up our first one. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well then. <laughs> On that note. Uh oh, my heart is beating so fast. Okay, so. While we're being soothed by the background noises of Dennis's washing machine, uh, let's resume. <laughs> let's resume where we left off. It's the Vidalkin clothes uh. washer going off in the back. <laughs> yes, they they have that. It's Sunday um, for your parents as well. <laughs> they have that now. <laughs> uh, let's resume where we left off. Almost at the very top of the broken rib in front of a wooden cabin surrounded by snow. Pontifex. Oh, that's very cute. Mm -hmm. Your father ends the hug he has enveloped you in, and now his eyes regard you with a gentle kindness and a spark of joy. He stands tall, dressed in heavy pelts and a fur cloak, his hair is neatly tied into a ponytail, cascading down his back like the flowing currents of a river at night. He smiles widely, he can't seem to help himself. You look at his face, 
untouched by the passage of time, free of any wrinkles, and that odd thought hits you again. Somehow, you have outgrown your parents. This man forcefully pulls his attention away from you and instead glances somewhere behind you at the rest of the group. And it says, Mr. Moyer, I seem to recall specifically asking you to avoid disclosing our existence and location to anyone. And yet you bring such a large group to our doorstep. You see his gaze glancing at each of you, stopping for a few seconds on the giant bird. He seems perplexed by this. Uh, Arin clears his throat and quickly says, <clears throat> uh, Pontifex and his friends found out about you on their own. I merely offered to make their journey swift and safer. There's a brief pause and then the Vidalkin laughs again and says, Oh, I know, I'm not mad, none at all. <laughs> you brought us our little tadpole. Please, everyone, come in. Lunch is almost ready. And he leaps back into the cabin, almost dancing. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm the dead pole. <laughs> Bonifax, like, slinks into the home. <laughs> you, you take I'm a step forward. <laughs> you take one step forward and, forward and then you, you pause right in front of the entrance and you can't help it. This feels surreal, after all. Your parents are only, are only Daria. Your father doesn't have a wrinkle on his face, your precious prism is somewhere in the sky. Everything is odd. Everything is out of place. Like you have been all your life. You look back at your past for just a moment. You've been alive for nearly four centuries. For as long as you can remember, you've been inquisitive and analytical, always asking questions and seeking answers. Some people used to say that it's in your blood. It's just what Vidalkin are like. But your adoptive parents lovingly saw it as you being you. And so you learned, and you taught, you read, and you wrote. A life dedicated to the pursuit of both faith and studies, divine and arcane, order and chaos. You are always a living contradiction, always out of place. An orphan raised by half-elves on the eastern continent. A cleric of the Jade Pantheon who went on to study arcane magic in Elin Arden. Everywhere you went, everything you did, you would always upset someone. Fellow clerics condemning your blasphemous wizardy magic. Elven scribes enraged by the books you have penned. You even had a falling out with Arryn over your respective theories. But it never mattered to you what other people thought. You've never let anyone's opinion slow you down. You've always kept that feeling of being out of place buried deep down. All that mattered was knowledge, research, enlightenment, progress, always progress, always moving forward, another mystery to unveil, another question deserving its proper, accurate answer. And yet your parents did something unthinkable. They rid the world of their research, a step backwards. You remember that dream, that vision of your parents hugging you one last time, talking about destroying something, burning pages, claiming that there are things not worth knowing, N not worth knowing, things they couldn't let anyone else know, knowledge out of place. For a couple of Vidalkin, they were very emotional at that moment, crying and shaking. It dawns on you that in order to find out what exactly led your parents to abandon you, you may have to learn what they discovered. Whatever that knowledge was, they couldn't handle it. So what makes you think that you can? You're here now, one step away from a simple cabin, one more chance to turn around. Pontifex, do you walk in? Yeah, I think he, like, you know, was was just slinking in towards the hall and then stops for just a brief moment and has this whole kind of interior revelation. Uh, and I think he, like, looks down into his hand with his little, uh, his little weird astrolabe thing that no one really gets what it is. Uh, and it's, like, stares into it for a little bit. And the little, uh, the little blue light on it just pulses like ever so subtly. And he kind of, you can like, uh, almost like hear him tightening his grip on the brass, uh, kind of steals himself and 
Uh, I think he like stands up straight, which has been probably a very, very long time since anyone has seen the professor stand all the way up uh, without his usual hunch, him correct his posture. Uh, and his kind of timid, uh, timid, childlike eyes he had for just a moment kind of clear away and that familiar, uh, I'm going to upset some people look uh, <laughs> washes over his face. And yeah, he almost, instead of just, Walking in, he almost marches in. Okay. Pip, do you, uh, do you remain a bird? Pip tries to remain a bird, but then realizes he cannot get through the door frame. He cannot and fit. Once his bird-like intelligence grasps this fact, <laughs> <laughs> he will. Like a dog carrying a stick, you give it like a bunch of... You try a bunch of times to fit through. Tilt your head, your shoulders keep... Do birds have shoulders? Whatever, they keep hitting the sides <laughs> of the door. And yeah, eventually, you're back to your normal child self. <laughs> and one by one, you all step inside. The moment you, cr you cross that threshold, a wave of warmth envelops you like a hug. It feels like the cabin itself is welcoming you with open arms. The fire in the hearth crackles playfully. The scent of burnt wood mixes with the mouth-watering promise of a warm meal. It smells like vegetable stew and roasted meat. For some of you, your gaze is drawn in the middle, where a long wooden table is set specifically for your group. You notice a couple of large chairs, comfortable enough for a pair of fur blocks, a taller one that seems perfect for Pip. And next to that one, there's a tiny spot that you can only imagine is reserved for Squeak. Seraphis so is immediately drawn to some bowls on the floor, while Aaron wanders in the direction of a wooden dragon chess board and a coffee table in front of the fireplace. There's a game currently in progress. The walls are adorned by oil paintings. Uh, they're all about plants, animals, and environments. Almost all in a snow-covered landscape. A couple of them include Vakanath, front and center. There's a feeling of timeless peace in here. You all begin to take off your coats, your gloves, your snow-covered boots. All worries and troubles are left at the doorstep. Pontifex's father seems to struggle to remain calm, his face beaming despite his obvious attempts not to show it. Uh, make yourselves comfortable, food should be ready in a minute. And he disappears into what you imagine to be the kitchen, whistling as he does. Yeah, Pip sits in Brooke's chair. <laughs> <laughs> and Sunny sits in the other one. <laughs> Sunny sees the tiny one just for me. No, <laughs> the other big one. <laughs> Brooke is left one. with the tiny one. I guess he it's, it's, it's... Walks to the big chair and just looks at Pip till he maybe moves. <laughs> Pip just gives him a wink and then moves to the other chair. <laughs> um, the the number of chairs in the room. You said there seems to be chairs for each of us, and then there's mm -hmm. and is then, there two other chairs? Yes, there's two more. Uh. I think yeah, Pontifex is like almost like on his way to the to a chair of his own. Just kind of like stops between those two and like puts a hand on the the backrest of each of them and just like lingers for a little bit. Those two chairs are very different from all the other ones because they're significantly older. Uh, the all the other chairs they've obviously been made very recently, and they. In addition to the fact that obviously they fit you, uh, but these two are much older, and so like you identify them immediately. They they've been worn with use and with time. The table also is brand new. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, and then hello, I kind of break away find his seat and just sit real proper and like rest his brass astrolabe like on the table he keeps kind of glancing at it 
you all eventually find uh, um, your way to each seat and the the Vidalcan emerges from the kitchen with uh, bowls of food there is uh, pretty much a feast available for all of you um I, I'm not even going to ask for like an inside check he's obviously trying to remain calm and composed and just utterly failing um he he's always smiling whenever he thinks that nobody's looking at him um he pretty much just bounces from and to the kitchen uh, I have a I have a mini for him Oop. Here you go. Oh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Oh. He's in the sky now. He oh. has kind eyes. He does. <laughs> he looks like the... I don't know the actor's name. He's like the really big Chinese dude that's like... In, he's basically the token big Chinese guy in movies. And he always looks super nice. Let me Google that. Token yeah. big Chinese guy <laughs> in movies. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm not finding. It's a uh, uh, Benedict Wong. Uh, he was uh, he played Wong in uh, in Doctor Strange. Oh. Oh. This yeah, like that the, guy. Like the the big Chinese guy that's he's always like a super friendly, super wholesome character in every role he plays. That's okay, him. That is him. <laughs> it's him. We it found him. Benedict Wong. <laughs> Just going Ladies to... and gentlemen, the cameo. My dad, <laughs> voice acted and role played by D. Benedict Wong. <laughs> I'm going to give him a round of applause. <laughs> right with the, we had a budget. <laughs> once, once everybody has food uh, in front of them, he sits down on one of those two remaining chairs. Um, and uh, he rubs his hands and he says, I... I don't know if Mr. Moyer has um, introduced me yet, but uh, I don't know any of your names, so uh, pr perhaps <clears throat> let let's be proper. Uh, <laughs> my name is Exarch. What about yours? <laughs> Artifex is saying dead silent. Uh, yes, Pip. Pip holds up the the dye that's tied to his hair. I guess Brooke would wait till see if others <clears throat> would say something first. But if they don't, he... Sunny will be the first person to speak up. Okay. Uh, just introducing herself. Uh, she... You know what? Uh, Brooke, roll an insight check. Okay... <clears throat> oh god, this is taking forever. Okay. Uh... Brooke, uh, Sunny, <clears throat> sitting right next to you, being the first person to speak up, seemingly in a, uh, in a better mood now that she's back with both of her feet on the ground, and she's in a building, and uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. nobody, uh, uh, Pip is no longer a bird. Um, she seems kind of unaware of the odd mood at the table, and in a way that's kind of to her advantage, because she breaks the silence. Uh, she seems very eager to start eating, but she's... Uh, while everybody else was waiting for somebody else to speak, she's waiting for someone else to start eating. You see how like she's paying attention to everyone's hands, trying to see the moment when anyone goes for the food, so that she may also feel justified to do the same. After that, <coughs> Brooke would introduce himself. Just his name, full name, Brooke Hyatt Tap. 
and then give a nod to the others and maybe reach for bread. Did you say there was bread? There is bread. Yeah, I'll Freshly reach for baked. bread. Um, Sunny takes that as like her cue and she also begins to just fill her, her plate. Um, <clears throat> and uh, in the middle of like doing so, she points in Pip's direction and says, that's Pip. That's that's why he has... You get it. You get it, yeah? You get it. A squeak in rat form has leapt off of his tiny chair and is now on the table with no table manners, just l eating things. <laughs> Ignoring... There's like a little rat-sized plate for him. He can just ignore it. He just goes for like the yeah. like the plates of food <laughs> that are in the middle of the table. Uh Virion would introduce herself and so would Tekka, I imagine. Um Arin do doesn't and Exarc doesn't really wait for Pontifex to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, he just sort of like Smiles at him once everybody else has uh, uh, spoken. And then he invites you to begin eating, even though half the table by this point already has started. Right. Uh, we're not in a, in a hurry or a, there's no time issues. Right. We have time for all of this. The only thing you have to worry about is the food getting away. cold. Okay. And then, yeah, Pontifex will start to eat uh, in, like, very small portions, very slowly. It's fine food. It's a surprising variety, considering where you are. You did pass, like, a, a garden... Uh, on your way to the actual front entrance, and you could see that there was more of it behind the cabin, most of it that you weren't really able to see. Uh, so you figured they probably grow their own vegetables, they probably hunt for their own meat. Um, some things might, uh, like, yeah, perhaps the, where they might have gotten the flour or other ingredients, you uh, would have slightly more trouble figuring it out, but... Uh, Otherwise, there is a bit of everything for everyone. And uh, um, quickly, just mere seconds after everyone has started enjoying their meal, um, Exarch turns towards you, Pontifex, and says, I... I would... If... Uh, I don't know if you're comfortable eating while eating... Uh, talking while eating, but I'd love to hear about your life. Everything you've been up to. Uh, sure. From uh, if, uh, from what point? The very beginning. Spare no details. Uh, okay. Uh, sure. Okay. I haven't. I haven't quite produced an autobiography yet, but uh, no time like the present. Uh, so, after whatever circumstances had me wind up on the front porch of those clerics of the goat, I, uh, well, I, I was raised uh, there um, by them in a loving home. Uh, my childhood was uh, tumultuous. I uh, had to deal with hostilities I was not ready for, but uh, survived it. I was better for it. And then in, in my younger years, I, I went on to follow in the footsteps of my adoptive parents and uh, vowed faith to the goat and became a. Uh, a cleric of the goat. I spent my times in the church going over scriptures and learning all there was 
to know, or at least all I could learn in that, uh, in that place in Ezridora. And eventually, uh, we became more infatuated with academia, and rather than simply reading the teachings of others, uh, to instead spread them to uh, the younger generations and add my own thoughts and processes into it. So I was invited and eventually granted the professorship at the University in Nazaradora as a theologist and historian. You become a teacher. Uh, yeah, yes, this is after the death of Vakanath. Of course, it is a, a bit of a disheartened finding myself, but uh, yes, I was there for over 200 years, actually. That's, at the Nazaradoran <laughs> University good. of History and Theology. That's, that, that, that's delightful. It's something we wouldn't have expected. It was a, a very simple time. Just drowning myself amongst the myriad of libraries and books they had to offer. Uh, admittedly spending most of my time as learning what had happened to Vakanath and why. But uh, eventually, the, the tree came back. And uh, my connection to the goat with it, I uh, decided that, that rather than seeing this as a miracle, uh, that everything has cause and effect and reason, and uh, I couldn't take other people's words as the truth, and I had to find my own. And after my years of study, without my connection to the gods, I had I devised a bit of a theorem that was blasphemous to most. Uh, that the divine and the arcane are perhaps not so different. And uh, nobody liked that collectively. But uh, I figured the best way to find an answer to a question that no one has discovered is to look in places no one is willing to go. And so I did. I mean, I'm made my way out of Nazradora and over to uh, Eleonard and, and after uh, a bit of time there, uh, embarrassingly too long compared to the elves. I, uh, you know, I jo joined an elf wizard college of the scribes. And I was uh, mentored uh, by a high scrivener Lithorel Loreathor, and eventually I graduated much to the chagrin of some of the other elves uh, and became a journeyman scrivener and spent my time learning there and it is where I met Arin, where I continued to develop my thesis. We had some childish disagreements that I perhaps took a bit too far and we had uh, Falling out of sorts. Arin does a bit of a, a like a, a a shy smile. <laughs> after a time, I came to meet the, his son, uh, Talix, and uh, grew close to him it, uh, in a way that felt quite natural. And then, of course, his son inherited his father's wanderlust. And after. Uh, losing Arin in those previous circumstances, I decided I wouldn't make the mistake again, and I followed Talex out here in hopes of helping him get where he wants to go and mayhaps finding an answer to my questions before my long life eventually came to an end. And uh, this is where I met all of these people. Uh, Honestly, the the closest I could call to friends in a very long time. And I found you. And the, there's a whole bunch of stories here in Ladaria, but uh, I was a dragon once. I, I won a wizarding tournament. I, I went through a, a, a brief a stint with a tabaxi that I don't fully understand what happened. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> a whole bunch of business. I've been to the world of dreams and back and numerous times. I've spoken and garnered the favor of gods that are not my own. Etc. Etc. I've lived a full and eventful life. Exarch nods along and he's absolutely enraptured. Uh, he adds, he, he asks questions every once in a while, just trying to get more details out of you. He wants to know if your adoptive parents were good to you. He wants to know more about the uh, your time in Elinard and the elves who didn't uh, fully agree with what you were doing and who were upset when you graduated. Um, all of it just seems to come from a genuine place of curiosity. That, yeah, he, um, uh, he answers him at every step of the way. Meanwhile, that <laughs> other chair next to him still remains empty. Yeah, he's while well, the professor is, is giving his little explanation and answering some questions, there's definitely like noticeable pauses that would be like maybe he's thinking about where to go from there, but he's very clearly like almost slowing himself down and hesitating and waiting for the last member of the audience to arrive so they don't miss anything, that sort of thing. And he keeps kind of looking towards that chair and then continues going. Um I do think whenever he's recounting the events, he he recounts them in uh, way more positive lights than they were. Um, I don't think he <laughs> talks about the horrible burns on his skin from being mm -hmm. bullied. I don't think he talks about just like the the sheer like just combative angst that he had with so many of the elves, the the all the problems that he's had in in Ladaria, and he specifically omits uh, the fact that Talix is perhaps drowning at the bottom of a devil infested <laughs> ocean. Uh, he, he gives the whole retelling as more of like, you know, he, he keeps mm -hmm. it positive and hopeful, uh, which everyone else who knows his story would realize is very obviously forced. <laughs> Arin does join in whenever your uh, your story moves to your time in Elinarden to the part where you would have known him. Uh, he adds some details and he uh, makes a couple of jokes at your expenses that are mostly harmless and it, it feels like back when you two were friends the first time around and uh, uh, before you had your, your falling out with him. Uh, and when your story pivots to your time in Ladaria, uh, some of the others from your party may or may not join in. Sunny does. Every once in a while, she seems to be a. Uh... She seems very comfortable with this atmosphere. Uh, also, to be very comfortable with the food, she she really likes it. Uh, do Pip or Brew ever chime in? Add their own details. <laughs> Pip would be silent for the first little while but once he feels more comfortable uh, would speak through Squeak and, and add in little bits and pieces of fun things that happened uh, sometimes to perhaps Pontifex's embarrassment other times trying to, to mm, like I'll show off Pontifex as being really cool yeah talk him up <laughs> I think Brooke would mostly listen but <clears throat> not, or it's a like little years to agree with it. Okay. Yeah, that's perfectly fair. Um, Exarch doesn't seem to be surprised uh, at uh, Pip's voice coming from the rat. Um, every once in a while, Squeak is eating and didn't expect. Uh, to be talking through him, and so there's like, that. yeah, <laughs> exactly that sound. Yes, <laughs> I couldn't. It's, have it's the weirdest sensation. Like words. you hear Pip's voice talking out of Squeak's mouth while his mouth is full, but Pip isn't eating. But it still sounds like <laughs> Pip is eating while talking. Um, it's the craziest thing. 
And at the end of all this, Sextark begins to ask questions to the rest of you. There, uh, with Pontifex, he really wanted to know every little detail. Uh, with the rest of you, it's a bit more generic. It's more of a, like, what do you do? Uh, what are you on Lidaria for? Where were you born? Uh, very, like, small talk kind of conversations. Um, none of them that seem particularly too, too private or too invasive. Um, do, do Pip and Brooke answer him? Yeah. Yep. He okay. has kind eyes. He has kind <laughs> eyes! Completely. <laughs> this is like just a... not answer Benedict Wong? <laughs> <laughs> this is just Every like... time we don't answer immediately, he just puts on a smile. And we're forced to. <laughs> <laughs> He's so disarming. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, overall, the atmosphere around the table is just very pleasant. There's good f food, good company. Everybody's having a good time. There's just that empty chair that's still empty, but outside of that, uh, there's... Really nothing off or odd about this. Uh, some of you might be enjoying this like tiny little family reunion. Those of you who have missed the warmth and comfort of uh, being in the company of your own relatives. After two and a half days of just walking up this stone staircase with almost nothing to look at and nothing else to do, this is a pleasant reward. Um, Arin, at some point, would gesture in the direction of uh, the dragon chessboard and say, The the two of you, you play dragon chess. Uh, Exarch seems excited at this uh, change in topic uh, and... Uh, yeah, begins to talk about how he and, and this will be like the first time where he mentions Pontifex's mother by name, Luzan. He says that he and Luzan play all the time. They just like to have this the dragon chess board there in front of the fire, and every once in a while they come over and they make a move, just whenever they want to. And this game that they have going on as uh, was started months ago. <clears throat> and they are barely in perhaps the middle of, uh, of the entire game. And uh, um, you can all roll an insight check. Ah, it's Luzan. Oh, that's close. May I have an insight check also from Dennis yep, yep, and Matt? Yep. Okay. So, for the two of you, for Pontifex and Baruch, um, there's something odd on Aaron's face specifically. Like, the slightest, the slightest bit of perplexity that he doesn't elaborate on. He doesn't seem to think it's worth even mentioning it. He just goes back to eating. Um, actually he tries to, but then he realizes he's like he's stuffed. You guys have been at this for like an hour by by now, and he just puts down fork and knife and leans back into the chair. And uh, uh, overall, Arian seems to not ask any additional questions. I had to take a phone call. Did he say why lasagna wasn't there? <laughs> no. Where's my mom lasagna? Why are why is there no lasagna? No, no, no. There, there was, uh, uh, no. He he. The the name was mentioned because Exarch said that the two of them play dragon chess. Oh, okay. So no one's asked the question yet. <laughs> the question no. we're all thinking. <laughs> yeah. Hey, why isn't she here? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
love that. Exarch pauses for a moment. He was still thinking about dragon chess. And then, like, realizes actually what, what Pepe is saying. And he looks over at the empty chair. And that's a moment when his smile is shaken for a moment. But he tries very hard to, to keep it on. Um, and he adjusts his position on the chair and rubs his fingers together, just in search of warmth, and says, um, well, it's, she's, she's outside. I don't really know where. And what do you mean? Where, where did she go? Why? Well, well, she she knew, we knew. Um, okay, um, context. Your mother is really good at seeing things that are yet to happen. It's it's a gift. She's always had ever since she was a kid. And uh, um, a while back, she told me you were coming. That you and your friends would show up at our doorstep. And so I started to prepare. I knew we needed a lot more chairs than we current than we had back then. Uh, and and funny story, we were actually waiting for you in a few more days from now. But then two days and a half ago, she looks at me and says, actually, they'll they'll be here in two days and a half. And I said, <laughs> two days and a half? I don't know if I have time to finish with those chairs. And I had to really rush. <laughs> um, so if she knew we would be here, why isn't she here? Because she has complicated feelings about uh, what we have done. She did not want to see me. I don't think that she doesn't want to see you, Pontifex. It's... She feels that if she were to meet you now, the entire reason why we did what we did would be undone. And your loneliness would have been for nothing. But 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 I disagree. I think we achieved what we set out to do, to do, and what we do now won't affect what's in the past. It won't render any of it meaningless. I think that right now she's just more emotional than how she's used to feel. Well, then, as the individual who disagrees with your prior actions, in, in that you and I are in agreement, uh, this is, of course, leading up to an explanation to me for everything. Right? You keep uh, beating around the bush as it were. The, the the reason you did what you did and and why and it would be for not all of this what is the reason you did what you did why did why did you do it and what did you do Exar pours himself a glass of wine as unemotional about it as possible I, I will try to see reason where reason exists but understand the longer this goes on the more difficult it is for me to stay level headed You asked earlier if uh, there was a time limit, and, and we don't. I guess uh, <laughs> I have avoided it for, for long enough. But, well, this explanation, uh, I had always meant to give it to you. I mean, that's why we left you with that gem. For there to, to be a chance for you to, to find us. And we said back then that if you had, then we would tell you. And I intend to keep that promise. Exarch goes on to, like, start saying something else, and right at that moment, the front door opens. And there's this gust of cold air that 
blows in and everyone instinctively just turns to look. There is another Vidalcan at the entrance, dressed in pelts, furs, very, very similar, almost perfectly matching what Exarch is wearing. Uh, she, like most Vidalcan, Exarch actually being an exception, she has no hair whatsoever, no no hair upon her head, nothing. Uh, instead, she has this set of purple tattoos that go uh, across her head and across her face. Uh, you, you saw those tattoos even in the dream, she's had them for a very long time. She walks in with purpose and focus. Her expression is very um, unemotional. She begins to go around the table. Exarch does like a um, a very awkward clap of his hands just a couple of times, saying, "Ah, Luzan, you're you're late." She doesn't acknowledge this. She just goes up Pontifex's uh, Pontifex's chair, and leans forward. To look at him in the eyes. I have a meanie for her too. I check. I check. Oh, those aren't Ooh. this kind of eyes. Those are Pontifex eyes. Where's these where he come from? That's right. Yeah, the from yeah. Those are Pontifex eyes. Yeah, there's. <laughs> There's the just passive cold disdain. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect couple. I love the body language of those two dogs. Yeah, Chips. they're really good. Yeah. A Pontifex, for a few seconds, you you just find yourself looking in the eyes of your mother. There's still that weird feeling of the realization. This is one of your parents and you recognize her for having seen her a couple of times in your dreams but she's otherwise a stranger to you it's a face that you barely recognize that should instead be deeply ingrained in your memory from growing up she lacks that spark of joy in her eyes she seems just very deeply focused, and for some reason, even though she is just inches away from your face, looking straight into your eyes, you don't really feel seen. And then she straightens her back and gestures towards the exit. Um, and she says, There is someone else looking through your eyes. We need to get rid of that. Uh, why? I'm not going to ask who or how you know. I'm going to ask why we have to get rid of it. Is there a secret here? We can't Is have anyone else know about you this place. Me? She maintains eye contact. No emotion going through her face. She keeps just a finger pointed towards the exit. Um, and finally, after a moment, she looks towards the rest of the table and says, I can use everyone's help. I look at Pontifex. Does he seem in agreement? Did he get up? Uh, I think he's still, like, holding the gaze on her. Uh, as opposed to his dad, who he seemed almost timid and kind of childlike and that kind of enraptured in the moment. I think he's, like, almost glaring. <laughs> <laughs> A <This> woman! woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, uh, he's almost, like, staring her down, whether or not she returns the look. Like, a little defiantly. Mm -hmm. so I don't think he's really doing anything I think he's just sitting there in silence yeah, basically the... <laughs> waiting for her to make the first move Pontifex glaring at her 
now looking over the rest of the table, uh, Exarc suddenly like just kind of sinking into his own chair. Um, for the first time this uh, since you met him, looking just deeply uncomfortable and unsure of what to do or say. Um, and then like he seems to find something to say and uh, lifts like uh, just lifts a finger as if like about to uh, share an idea and he says well um, if if someone is uh, what scrying on you and Lu Luzan doesn't really like nod or shake her head like just doesn't really elaborate uh, and Exarch continues I suppose before any serious talk can be had we should indeed get rid of that so that's the only way Pontifex will get answers huh? and Brooke can get up Luzan go goes uh, or something. Yeah, Luzan just leaves the cabin. Um without adding another word. But uh, Exarch does like stand up and get closer to Pontifex and uh like looking at him, but in reply to what Brook said, he says, I I do promise to, to give you answers. To give you a chance to have answers. But um, that will require that we talk about something important enough that if Luzani is seeing something upon you, um, we can't really have anyone else know. In fact, this will be just for you. Whether you tell your friends afterwards is your decision, but I will speak to you alone. Is that acceptable? He's saying this to Pontifex? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know why I thought he's saying this to Brooke. Because <laughs> Brooke asked uh, if uh, he, this is the only way to get answers for you. Uh, and so, like, he's sort of, like, replying to that, but he's speaking to you. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think Pontifex will just give him, like, a, like a soft nod. Uh, and then follow moves on. Um, when Sunny stands up, she grabs, like, a handful of food to, to carry with her, uh, outside. She wasn't quite done eating. Uh, Arin <laughs> seems invested in whatever is going on, uh, and quite done with, with, uh, the meal. So he, uh, comes along. Um... You know what? Let's make life easy for me and say that, like, Viren and Tekka stay in the cabin just so that I don't have to worry about them. Sure. Um, they they, they, they offer to clean up the, the table. <laughs> they offer to, like, <laughs> clean up the table and put away the dishes. Uh, the, maybe they're uncomfortable with the vibe that suddenly changed. Uh, whatever in game reason Sid or Jory would agree with, but. Uh, um, just, just to make things simpler for, uh, simpler for me, let's uh, leave them in the cabin. Um, as you guys step outside, Luzan is already like out of sight. You actually are not sure where she went, and you have to follow her footsteps in the snow to find this, um, just flat, wide open area that's a couple minutes away from the cabin. Uh, away from the colorful plants uh, that they've managed to grow even in this very harsh, cold environment. Um, you see that uh, there's... Uh, uh, her hands are softly glowing with this purple magic. Um, she seems midway through casting a spell as all of you eventually gather uh, around her. Let's bring the red. Mm 
Okay. Ah, oh, the rest of you arrive from like this direction down here. So we can have. And you can position yourselves like any in any particular square that you want. <clears throat> uh Luzan just for uh -huh. Pontifex to step forward. His parents are smart. They're just outside of a collective fireball range. They know. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> <laughs> she saw a future and decided, nah, not today. <laughs> He's just outside that circle. <laughs> My goodness. Okay. Uh, Luzani is gesturing for Pontifex to approach. Oh, Someone and the is... cat is absolutely with... with. I think he's like mentally willed Seraphist. Be right with him as like a comfort animal. Aww. Right next to him? Okay. I think on him. Yeah, that's fine. Just on, yeah. on his head. Yep, yeah, like that. <laughs> that looks fine. <laughs> Like perched uh, like in like the nook between his neck and like his shoulder plate. Yeah, what if Phoenix does that? Our time eating be like a short rest. I did say it was over an hour, so yeah, yeah, bro, I'll allow it. Spell right. slot returned. Heck yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Luzan says Somebody is able to look through your eyes and hear through your ears. I don't know who it is. I don't know why they're doing it, but I'm going to read you of this. And she reaches forward with one hand. She touches your chin. There's still this glow on her skin. Uh, this magic that's just kind of flowing on, on her fingers. And she says, Wherever this magic is coming from is far away. I can't dispel it because it's not on you. But I can give it shape, and then you can all destroy it. Shall we begin? Hey, will this reveal who it is? It might. It may not. Fine. Luzan grabs your chin and it feels like suddenly she just pulls your face off. It's it's painful, it's sudden. And everyone else can see that she's literally holding your face in her hands, or rather well, your face is fine. You, your hands like instinctively go up to to touch your face, and you're fine. It's still there. The beard is still there. Your eyes, um, it you're in a bit of pain, but it it was like like pulling, um, it's like pulling a bandaid, you know. Uh, moment of really strong pain that immediately begins to fade, uh, and she is holding your face, or more like a mask of you. Something that looks just like you, but isn't really real and seems very rigid and solid. And she takes a step back and lets go of it. And the mask hits the ground and begins to pull snow towards itself and build a body out of it. Everybody roll initiative. Oh, man. Oh, man. Who's been spying on us? A werewolf. We know it has to be on the same continent, though, right? Oh, uh, yeah, from everything you know. Spells, yeah. Oh, shit, that many's spooky. Fitting. I bet it's the freaking weird priest guy from that one city I don't remember the name of. Arian Thar? 
I bet it's Barry and Thar. <laughs> or, or it could uh, be Shalira Eradova. Gulborg. She's obsessed with you. Gulborg Gok is like in prison on another plane of existence. I don't know. He's an arch cleric. They'd be doing crazy stuff. Uh, what about <laughs> Inwill Twilight Sun, the cleric of the possum? Yeah, but he's cool. We're cool with him. Well, you know, Why is we're Brooke cool hurts? with Barry and Thar. He's yeah. healing right in front of your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Matt, do you want to. Do you want a health bar on Arin? Like everybody else? Arin's uh, just... Yeah, that's probably easiest so I can track it better. Arin has health? Y yeah, yeah. He's not just. It's just slowly deteriorating, immune but to yeah. Everything? <laughs> Um, he cannot die. Person. He is yeah, all. Let me let me see real quick what the proper. Yeah. Okay. Wow, we never set up his mini for combat. Because you guys didn't have any on the way here. <laughs> <laughs> um. It's been a while since we've had a combat. Yeah, uh, traveling since with the Luna Mella meant uh, no no combat while she was with you, and then you skipped some things. <laughs> uh, there's our so. things. Okay, that is correct. But his health is missing, and the other bar too. This thing is called animated spell. What if I used counter spell? <laughs> Instant win <laughs> on Pontifex's mom. <laughs> Whatever this face thing you're doing, quit it. <laughs> Stop. Stop Just dispel it. this thing. <laughs> dispel magic. Undo this snow thing. Um, I don't know how to make the second bar have color right now off the top of my head. I don't. I don't recall. Okay. <laughs> okay, there you go. So, what have we got now? Oh, sorry, let me roll his initiative. I forgot. Uh, that okay. initiative's not right. I don't know why it gave Pip a much higher initiative than I set. It? Ooh. Oh, oh my god. Okay. Well, there's Aaron's. Oh god. That's a weird nat 20 tick. There we go. What the heck? Is Pip an NPC now? <laughs> um Yeah. You must have clicked accidentally on this setting. Oh oops. So let's see if uh... Yeah. That okay, works. There you go. Um, I still can't see Arn's health bar, though. You can't? Huh. Can anyone? Nope. Shit, okay, only I can. I'm... <sighs> Let me fix that. Oop. Fix. Might have to redo everything I did, but... Oh, uh, yeah, we do. <laughs> okay, that's fine. But now there's a health bar. Yeah, but I need to uh, redo all of the settings. Uh, if you guys want to take a five minute to bathroom break, this I suppose is a good time because I need to fix all this. <laughs> okay, be right back. I yeah. can do this. All right. Better than an Eberron where we had one combat music. <laughs> Uh, I'm giving you choices. Yeah, I respect okay. consistency. Arin is first, which is uh, controlled by Matt. Uh, yes. Uh, this feels a little... Uh, has Arin encountered this type of thing before? Uh, Arin specializes in some types of things and whatever the hell this is, that's no. He has no idea. 
Okay, not one of them. Cool. Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> then, uh, yeah, the rest are a little, a little far back. Uh, so Aaron is going to cast. Uh, is he? Yeah, he's going to cast a uh, haste on uh, Brook. Ah. All right, haste. Uh... You know what? I really thought it was a touch spell, but it's not. Huh? It's... Oop. Yep. What does that mean for me, Ben? <laughs> Brook, you know what to do. And you feel speedy. <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> Your speed is doubled. You have a plus two to armor class, advantage on deck saves, and you have an extra action on each of your turns. Asterisk. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, let me write uh, And then he's gonna like, blank out here to the side while drawing his bow. Yeah, that is okay, before we move on to Brook's uh, turn, uh, on initiative 20, that's when Pontifex's parents act. Um, Exarch looks around, he didn't seem to like know that this was coming, and he goes nearby to... Uh, I didn't give him a thing, but uh, it's fine. He goes to get an axe that's like stuck in a stump of a tree. <laughs> um, and uh, 1530 is just gonna move here. As for Luzan, uh, she instead steps back. There's still that magic uh, in like her fingers that it almost slithers around uh, around them like like a handful of snakes. Uh, she's technically disengaging, stepping back, and then she says, "I recommend you all scatter. It's about to throw uh, is a storm of snow at all of you." She's so cool. Uh, and then now it's Brooke's turn. <laughs> the hammer <laughs> woodsman dad. <laughs> like, oh, an ugly monster suck out of your face. <laughs> 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 He's doing his best. Okay. Let's see if I can get it with my new speed. This is exactly the type of person that should marry this woman. <laughs> <laughs> Arcane problems require mundane solutions. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question to ask him. <laughs> Is this or this uh, being opposite of Pontifex? Yeah, either of these are flanking. Either of these squares. Hey, yo. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Does that mean I have two extra attacks? Um... <laughs> Your or, special, uh, so I've put uh, I, I put it in the Discord. Um, your extra action lets you do an attack, but you can only do one attack. So you have an extra swing, essentially. Cool. All right, I'll attack. Actually, <laughs> Brooke just myself. fucking flies forward, <laughs> just Woo! massive, like ten <laughs> feet long leaps. Just like right. kicking up a like a jet ski of snow. Yes, Sunny <laughs> has a bunch of snow kicked in her face. <laughs> well, first off, I'm gonna attack myself. To activate my <laughs> ride. <laughs> Can't have a too easy ride, right? Sword lightens up. Radiating. Mm -hmm. Then I attack. Twenty-four hits. Okay, okay, okay. So one to six. Mm. Are they? Oh. Yeah, Are you're you're flanking. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We yeah, talked yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you can crit fish. Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> oh my god. Yay. <laughs> You can roll the damage again. You don't add a plus seven mm. one more time. Oh, oh. buddy! That's Garbage incredible. Critical. What is happening? Garbage. Did you just do 12 damage on your crit? Yeah. 
It's okay, I can get another crit. Give me, give me! Oh. 22 hits. Buddy. It's okay, just, it's okay. It feels so bad. Okay. No, no, we want <laughs> to let other people have fun. Until I'm critting now! Not, which this is, is why the, without a the crit. Perkins critical is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you have your extra piece of action. 18 hits. I don't know why I put plus 7 before. Uh, oh. That was. Wait, that would be a 17 then? Um. 17 no, no. still hits. No, no. No? It's always plus oh. 8. I didn't do oh, it before eight. that. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, so I know where damage. So, um, through your right, um, you can feel you're cutting through something that I I even you who aren't like, you know, you're, you're not a wizard, you're not as in tune with magic as some of your companions, but even you can just feel you are cutting through just pure raw magic and you're essentially dispersing it. It's kind of like hitting smoke. Um, but you feel like your your sword uh, being enveloped in, in radiant magic, uh, it is doing damage. And you feel like you, you can keep this up and it should be fine. Alright, that's my turn. That uh, leads us to Pip. Uh, Pip uh, takes the advice of Luzan and start stepping away as far as possible. Um, he's going to leave Squeak behind, though. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. And from this distance, holds up his, uh, his effigy and is going to cast Phantasmal Killer on the animated spell. Needs to make a wisdom save. Okay. Uh, total is uh, not super good. Um, could be better. 14. That just fails. Uh, so Pip taps into the nightmares of this creature and it creates an illusory manifestation of its deepest fears visible only to that creature. Uh, it is frightened. Uh, at the end of each of its turns, it can make a wisdom saving throw or it will take psychic damage on a successful me, save the spell. Let ends. me read the text of Phantasmal Killer. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. So, this thing is immune to being frightened, but that oh. doesn't appear to make the spell not work? I mean, thematically. <laughs> <makes sense>. Right? <laughs> um, <laughs> this is odd. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a charmed condition, it's specifically frightened, but it doesn't say that, like... Ah, yeah. uh, there you go. Uh, a creature immune to being frightened would be able to act normally while affected by the spell, but will still take the psychic damage as long as they keep failing the saves. Yeah, that's, that's so what like, I was gonna go with. The vision is still affecting them, they're just not scared of it. Yeah, we're, we're going like, with yeah. that. Um... <laughs> We don't roll the damage now, yeah? Later? Nope. Roll it. At the end of its... Later. Okay. All right. Uh, what, what, what does the illusion look like? Since, uh, that um... depends on, on it. Creature. It's visible only to that creature. We don't know. It's whatever okay, it fair. fears most. Yeah. I will. I will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which apparently it doesn't fear this anything. It's like a little pony. Pony. It's Isaac Sark's axe. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, then I don't have to narrate anything because you don't know what it is seeing. Anything else from Bip? That's it. All right. Wait. Then. Where? No, it's not. I make Pebbles. magic stone. Nice. And then That's it's it. Squeak's turn. <laughs> yep. Squeak is going to say, "Hey, give me one of those." Grab one of the stones. Uh, he's still a rat, isn't he? <laughs> he's gonna transform back into. Uh, it was not told you guys you'd have to fight the manifestation of this magic. He could have like. Okay. He he in it. That. He's he gonna it. grab a stone, fly back around here. By speed's 40, I think. And he's going to chuck a magic stone at the animated spell. Toss it. Watcha! 26, 26 hits. Hit. You know, the fact that I'm abbreviating the animated spell's <clears throat> name in my notes as AS, and it's right below where I wrote AC. I keep getting confused. Mm. <laughs> All right. Ten um, points. Magical bludgeoning. Indeed. I imagine. Okay. Yeah. Squeak chucks the stone. Uh, it goes through the, sp the animated spell that doesn't really have much of a form and like almost hits Brook behind it. Uh, but it does leave a hole where it went through. It is still effective. Uh, anything else? That's it. All right, then it is the animated spell's turn. Uh, I'm going to need one of these. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh. Yeah. Right, That's a big cone. <laughs> getting that. Uh, not a whole lot. Oh, Pip. Dang it. <laughs> 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 so that's three people. That's three, four. Uh, behind, there's just two. So we're going with that. Professor, uh, you're. Oh, no, the two familiars. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's. Uh, it's fine. So S Squeak, Seraphis, Pontifex, and Sunny need to roll a Constitution saving throw. Does this deal uh, damage on half? Uh, yes. Yeah, there's nothing I can do to stop it for Seraphis. Okay. Well, is this cold uh, damage? Although Pon Pontifex, specifically, you don't have to roll. You roll a natural 20. Oh. oh. Uh, everyone else has to roll. Constitution? Yeah. Uh, not not you, Dennis. Yes, it's going to be cold Wait, damage. why not me? Greek is because it's a, you see the cone? <laughs> yeah, but don't I roll for Sunny? Oh, yes, for Sunny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Squeak is immune. Oh, good, That's crazy. Immune. Yes, because he's a devil from the sea. He's not immune sea to fire, devil. he's immune to cold. Okay. Um. So, Squeak doesn't have to roll. Uh, oh, Sir oh, Seraphis, it doesn't matter what she rolls. It, it does yeah, it. it doesn't matter. Oh. I'm the assuming cat. unless you roll very, very low, you'd have to roll <laughs> eight damage total. Um, I am rolling eight d8. So if you roll <laughs> a one on all of them, then, then you know. There, that is, gonna... I actually have rolled on my first four ridiculously low, but it's still not all ones. So this much plus that's better. So the total is 31 cold damage on a success, 15 on a fail. Uh, well, sorry, the other way around. 15 on a su success, 31 on a failure. Uh, and then the professor is going to cast uh, Absorb Elements to uh, lower that more to uh, 50, so to 7. 31 on a failure? Yeah. Ooh. Good said she is a tank. Um, more and more snow builds up around and onto this animated spell. 
uh, it becomes like a little bit thicker, a little bit taller, and then all of that snow is blown just straight forward uh, with incredible intensity. A uh, Pontifex, you nearly knocked off your feet, and yet you felt. Um, Ron Arcana check. Um, Arcana. Yeah, one of them. Big boy. We take it. Okay, 19. 19. Um, in your life, uh, the first half of your life, uh, your focus was on faith and religion. And later you moved on to just practical studies of magic. But initially you knew to have blind faith in certain things, even those you couldn't physically touch or you couldn't see with your own eyes. And you used to be adept in seeing signs that was part of the um, of your journey to eventually become a cleric. And you're not really sure, pinpointing what exactly it was that you saw just a moment ago is difficult. Almost like consciously you weren't really sure of it. But you notice something, perhaps just a movement off the corner of your eye, a moment where you turn to look at Exarc, or a moment where you considered Luzan's warning, and it felt like you were, you took a step right at the correct moment. Almost like you were just fated to avoid the majority of the damage from this attack. It would be Seraph's turn now, but um, your cat wasn't as lucky. So, uh, Sunny... One of those nine lives, they finally ran out. Oh, you know, fun fact, actually, there is now um, a... <laughs> There is, there is now a, an iced outline of the Tressum next to you. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, the animated spell needs to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, right. The end of your turn. Uh, wisdom saving throw. Uh, oh, it's a 14 again. Okay. It takes 40 10 psychic damage. This is the part where you're going to say, oh, by the way, it's also immune to psychic damage. <laughs> that was the first thing I checked. It's not. 20 points. Okay, oh, solid. Seraphis is pretty. <laughs> Ice Seraphis. Okay, Sunny's turn. Sacrifice. <laughs> yep. Well... I just realized that the animated spell is like a butt. Yeah, he does have a butt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Why? <laughs> does squats. <laughs> Animated squats. I think. Let's see. Uh, uh, 15. 20, 30, and then, then 20. Hold on, I'm coming! <laughs> Whew, alright. Oh, I shouldn't have eaten all, the all that food. Yep. <laughs> she still has like an armful of it. <laughs> Just, you know, you know. She still hasn't put it away. <laughs> That's actually her weapon. <laughs> That's the chicken drum. <laughs> Salami. <laughs> I need mean, to spells can have a little salami as a treat. <laughs> That's her turn. Okay, she she has spent years not eating anything, and she'll she'll be damned if she doesn't get everything she can out of this meal. Oh wait, I still have a bonus action, right? Uh, she she does. Okay, then I'm actually gonna use second wind. She oh, is fair. level eight. Are we mm -hmm. level eight? Yeah. Okay. For now. <laughs> Oh, God. 
<laughs> she, she, <laughs> she takes a bite out of the drumstick that she's still holding. <laughs> Makes her feel better. All right. And it's Pontifex's turn. Well, uh, we have ruled out Fireball for the time being. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I healed. I tried to at I least. I suppose. I mean, the option is still there. Wait, it, it's taller than everyone by a decent amount, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, It's a large yeah, then, creature in terms of squares. Then, uh, then it's it's at least a square taller. So never mind. Uh, I'm gonna I'm oh, gonna fire gonna a fireball in the sky. up. Yeah, and I'm gonna blow it up in the sky. So it just basically takes off the top half of this thing. Hope you I mean, do your math right. An hour, let it yeah, an hour and a half ago, you have proven like your your mastery of trigonometry. So like, oh, yeah. I'm not allowed. <laughs> Pythagoras's bird launcher. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't. So, uh, DC 16 deck save. Uh, ooh, okay. Dirty 20. This is just gonna be... This much fire damage. That's a pretty good roll. That is a good roll. I'll take it. It's like a little it, below average, but we'll take it. It's half on a success, right? Uh, correct. Okay. So it becomes 13. And uh, um, all the snow that makes up the body of the animated spell, it immediately melts away. The being directly in front of you, well, it's gone. For a moment, you think you might have won, but... You realize it's still there. It just no longer has snow on it, and so you can no longer see it. Oh no. <laughs> Whoops. The anti Pontifex monster. We learn, and we adapt, and we overcome. Well. Uh, <laughs> this is, well, this is a little funny then. Uh,. No, that's just creating it. Uh, then as a bonus action, uh, I'm going to uh, manifest a mind. I'm going to summon uh, my little spectral uh, orb. Orb tin art. Yeah, and we're going to put it. Uh, <laughs> the ball's doing crazy stuff. Uh, hold. Hold. Uh, hold. What? Is this upside down maybe? <laughs> Why, why is it? <laughs> nope, nope. Is the table slanted? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got you, I got you. <laughs> it's because I have advantage on dexterity. Hey. Uh, there. But, um. Uh, oh! 5, 10, 10 20. 25, uh, within 60 feet of me, so it's going to be up, up here. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, mm, I think the professor would instinctively back away whether or not it's a good idea. All right, everything for your turn? Uh, yeah. If there's no attack opportunity, then yes. Okay, um... Wait, have I used a reaction? No, I haven't. I don't think so. Yes, I can. All right, let's do that. Uh, oh, wait, you know what? Uh, how smart is this thing? How smart is pure magic? Very smart. I mean, uh, yeah, I imagine huh. very. Let me think, because I am not very smart. It's okay. Uh, yes, it is going to attack you. Is this allowed? I guess so. Okay, Let, sorry, I'm over things. Um, it is going to smack you with its really 
long and now invisible arm-like appendages? He has a 24 to hit. Uh, yeah, I will, uh, if it hits, I would have casted shield regardless. Um, and so it would be an AC of 25 now. 25 against my 24. Correct. All right. Uh, so no hit. Can you shield uh, an incoming attack that you don't see coming? I think you can, right? It's just, it's triggered uh, when you're hit. One reaction when you take, when you are hit by an attack or targeted mm -hmm. by the magic missile spell. So it doesn't have anything to do okay, with it. Okay, it does work. It. All right. Um, you feel something heavy slam on you and uh, you, you hold up your staff and it absorbs the the damage and you're left uh, uh, unscathed. unscathed. Yep. And I have the plus five until the start of my next turn. So the whole round. Uh, and that All right. back to I, if it's still swung at him, he's going to back up. Mm. Uh, to, I don't think I can go diagonal to there. Right? Because I was here. Mm. Yeah, so I can only go here. Okay. okay. And now it's uh, still you as it's Arian's turn. Uh, now he can't see it, so. Oh, it's true. Yep. Uh, unless... Can he cast Fairy Fire? He can't. Uh... Uh... Oh! Uh... Aaron is going to step... ...to here. Uh, mm -hmm. and then he's going to cast, uh, Detect Magic. <laughs> uh, it's Concentration, though, so he would drop Concentration on oh, his you're right. he did. you're right. Nope, never mind. Um, I think I can do it, so it's okay. How about... This probably isn't an animal or a plant, huh? Mm -mm. Hmm. Yeah, detect magic uh, was genius. Is this genius, just an invisible creature? But... Can we still attack it? Like, can he still shoot yes. this space? Yes, it counts okay. as an invisible creature, so like he can still shoot at disadvantage. Okay, so cancel that. Uh, then yeah, he's just gonna... He was drawing his bow before, he's just gonna take two bow shots. Okay. He gives it his best shot. Uh, just try very hard not to hit any of the others, figuring that it's still roughly where he saw it before. Oh, he's got really high to hit modifier. 22 hits? Uh... And then... This is damage. Oh, max damage. Oh my god. <laughs> How does that feel, eh? Is he using his uh, bonus action? <laughs> Do what? Is he using his bonus action for uh, the the force damage? Uh Oh, oh, I forgot about that. It's not in the... Uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. always had to open his character sheet, uh, like, on its own. Yeah, that, that I forgot. Okay. Uh, so, let me pull, let me pull it back up. Uh, see with this six feet next time he has a turn with all damage double fist. Uh, he has to be able to see it. Oh, he does! Never mind, uh, sadness. So, no. Uh, no, he won't. But, uh, he will, he will attack, uh, both times with the ball. He's rock. Yeah. So, uh, f uh, 14 and. It has good rolls. And then another. Another decent roll. Another shot. Damn. <laughs> you guys are doing really good. Uh, and then this is uh, just a Hail Mary. This thing is magic and it is not visible. Uh, and Ari knows a little bit about this stuff. Uh, he's going to use Ethereal Step. And is going to step into the world of dreams for a bit and uh, see if he sees anything. Okay. All right. Yep. Uh, so to to for uh, for everyone else, Arian seemingly vanishes 
um, in in the same way you've seen uh, uh, previously uh, Noah doing, and you've seen Nua, uh, Nu Nui <laughs> doing, um, and me, and he's gone, and and Brooke, indeed, Aaron is gone, and uh, Matt in the realm of dreams, um, he doesn't see anything unusual. This is his first time seeing the, to the top of the mountain like this. Um, and there's nothing really odd, nothing here that uh, um, not only he can see. The animated the spell itself does there? not. Uh, um, he does see the cabin. Okay. It looks a bit different, but he does see it. Uh, well, that's going to pick his curiosity. Uh, he's going to start to wander towards the cat. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's he's just going to start walking towards it. Uh, until he can come here. He has 35 out. feet of movement. Yeah, perfect. Rangers. All right, Brooke. Oh, wait, no. <clears throat> Before we move on to Brooke, it's uh, uh, initiative 20. <laughs> Uh, so we have Exorc coming in with an axe, not, not really knowing where he's swinging, but giving it his best try. <laughs> the swing at the floating arrows that are sticking out of something. Yeah, yeah, he aims for those. Uh, I'm not being as lucky on my rolls to disadvantage uh, as you are. Cause that's... It helps having plus 12. <laughs> uh, so both of his wings just are total misses. Uh, as for Luzan, uh, let me see what we have next. Um, ha, that's funny. Okay, that doesn't count. Uh, that doesn't count. That doesn't do anything. Okay, cool. Uh, so she's going to just say out loud, keep scattering. More snow is coming. And Brooke, it's your turn. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna steal the genius idea and sell it as my own. And okay. cast Detect Magic. <laughs> okay, you're not concentrating on anything right now. So to your eyes, you see the this outline of a literal spell. You can see it just as well as you could before when it was covered in snow. Interesting. All right. Does the eye Seraphine still count as flanking option? <laughs> no, she, she's gone. This is just the eyes. There's just an eyes outline of where she used to be. Okay. She has puffed well, out of existence. <laughs> well, you can still flank with Sunny you can walk or around, with, uh, yeah. with Dad. Okay, I'm walking around. Dad, at, I'm walking at dad. Here. No, no, <laughs> that's not work. Uh, I mean, sorta. <laughs> I kinda does. Sorta, ex dad. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna try to hit. Mhm. Mm With advantage. Okay. Twenty-seven hits. Okay, okay, okay. What? Is attack magic not an action for you? Yeah, but I have haste, right? Oh, it is your hasted action. Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That doesn't mean you only get one attack instead of three, but it's still, oh. yeah, good, good call. Uh, so 17. Oh, yep. That's really good. Yeah. Can I... Is it possible instead of pulling out the sword, make it stuck? So they know where to hit? <laughs> you, you, if you... Hmm... That's a fair Wait, idea. Which, which um, right are you using? Are you using the radiant one? Yeah, the radiant one. Doesn't it light things up? Mm, don't think so. I know my sword lights up. Oh, okay, maybe that's it. It's like, I, I remember right at the dawn, doing light to something. Yeah, it sheds bright light, uh, like the, the weapon does. Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um, I would allow you to let go of your weapon so that it stays in the animated spell and it negates the 
disadvantage from being invisible. I think if I let go of it... It's like between doesn't... that and it the arrows, the right. but it's mainly just yeah. a glowing target, you know? Oh, when he oh. lets go of the sword, it stops glowing. Shit. I think so. I'm gonna yeah, lock no, your thing. Your rights effect lasts until you finish a short rest or long rest. Yeah, right, you know, on a weapon you're holding, a weapon can only hold one. I think oh, it's... Maybe it doesn't go... Oh, no, no, no. They eroded that. They got rid of it because the problem was that whenever you would put your right on your weapon, it lasts a long time, but if you were to ever sheath your weapon, it goes away. So it just encouraged players who play Blood Hunters to just walk around with their weapon in their hand <laughs> because they're punished for putting it away. And so they, they changed it. Never mind. Okay. Yeah. I'll... Let my weapon stand in there. Okay. Then, moving on to Pip. Pip is going Pip to... Pip are in abandoned, you guys. Uh, he just vanished. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing new to Pip there. All the adults oh, in his life abandoned. Oh no! <laughs> Pip's going to drop off a magic stone next to Squeak. And then step to the side. And is going to cast Mind Sliver on... Well, he can't see it, can he? Oh wait, did, did the thing mm. make the roll before for the spell? The wisdom save? Yeah, at the end of his turn. Yeah, okay. Um he I can't I see her. Yes, but it did say I am negating the I said I'm negating the disadvantage from it being invisible, but I am gonna extend it to also spells. Like you know what to target. Oh really? Yeah, let's go with that. Okay. Br Pip Brooke gave cast... up his entire weapon to do this. I think that's fine. <laughs> All right. Pip will cast Mind Sliver on it then. It needs to make a, an intelligence saving throw. This is a smart boy, and I did roll a natural 20 as well. Dang. Sorry. <laughs> smart boy, indeed. Mm -hmm. Smart smart magic. I don't know how that works, <laughs> but that's... Yeah. Uh... <laughs> I say yes as DM. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just have him. Uh, then... Yeah, that's it. Okay, Squeak. Squeak is going to fly by over this way. And... Uh, while he's flying, is going to chuck the other magic stone at the animated spell. Okay. Fourteen misses. Dang. Well, that's it. Okay, moving on to uh, yeah, I made the spell. <laughs> I was about to skip it. <laughs> uh, cool. It is going to. I'm going to need a different shape. <gasps> I, I genuinely cannot see this. Uh, so we need. How many feet? 20 foot radius? Oh god. Ah! Yeah, let's not do this. <laughs> <laughs> no, not this. I like the other shape more. What if I do this? Can I see it better? Yeah, okay. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Red snow. It looks Red even snow. worse now. Um, no. The... Uh, you can only see the sword and the two arrows sort of like waving around, so you can't really see the the, the, the movement, the gesture, but you, see, you do see snow all around you going upward, freezing into like needle shapes, and then raining down on you guys. Uh, let me let me adjust this so we can get that, sorry. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> so everybody in this radius needs to roll a dexterity saving throw. Brooke has advantage because of haste. I think Sunny does too, right? Um, yeah. That, that sounds so about throws right. Dexterity. Cool. Yes. <laughs> I have advantage on the deck save. Okay. <gasps> if, oh, wow. if that's what I wrote on, on her stat block. Woo! Oh, I saved, wow. I saved. That is me. Oh, 
Oh, wait, she doesn't have advantage on deck saves. Oh, she doesn't? But it says, well, like, saving throws dex plus four. Isn't that's that the... not advantage. She just has plus four. She's just proficient. Oh, okay. Well, it's the first roll then, I guess, right? And it's a 19. Okay. Yeah. Um, 19 passes, 28 passes, 14 does not pass. Uh, and I'm missing Exarch because that's on me. Oh, no. <laughs> he also ate a lot of food. Uh, like he's wearing these really heavy pelts, so he's not the fastest boy on the field right now. Uh, so. This is an odd number of dice to roll. Okay. So, whoever succeeded takes the full amount, whoever failed takes half. The full amount is 7 points of bludgeoning damage. And... Um, 19 points of cold damage. Uh, so, 19 plus 7 divided by 2. Oh, that's on my calculator. <laughs> uh, I did say seven, yeah? Yeah. Uh, so that would be 13. Okay. We can get rid of that. If I can. All right, lovely. Um, this, I've already... Yes, I've already done it. Okay, perfect. Um, you do see also all these bits of eyes, like, getting stuck in the animated spell itself. Um, it is not immune to its own attack. As Seraph is easier, and Wisdom then it's back to Sunny. Oh, yes, yes, end of, his, end of its turn. Uh, Wisdom, eight? It fails. It takes... 24 points of psychic damage. That's pew, pew. funny, because you can't really see it, but you do see Brook's sword hitting the ground, the arrows landing, um, the bits of ice, the needles uh, also falling on the snow and uh, breaking into many shards. And there's a short moment of quiet, and then you see more and more wisps of magic, kind of scattering and taking on physical shape, uh, wearing snow on their bodies like uh, this one did before. Uh, give me a moment. Oh. Uh oh Okay. I um let me let me do this real quick. Loop bloop. Okay. That sorry. That's some initiative. Uh at the moment when this happens, um choose one among you to roll a D one hundred. Oh, that sounds fun. You don't don't let me roll deep those anymore. <laughs> oh, true. <laughs> I got it. All right, Matt. Oh, are they are they it's, shaking? It's wiggling. It's wobbling. It's wigg it's wiggling. Uh, wiggle, wiggle. It should be a sixteen. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I think so, because he should roll them from left to right. Okay. Sixteen. All right, sixteen. Ah, uh, noted! <laughs> okay, nothing else to say about that, so it's uh, Sunny's turn. Wait, is it? Yes, because the thing just went. Yep. She just got here. It's gone. <laughs> she goes to the <laughs> other thing. <sighs> Drumstick still in her hand. <laughs> 
How dare you interrupt Good. my lunch? <laughs> and she's gonna hit twice, but not with a drumstick. <laughs> yes. Roll. Um, so her weapon is supposed to be uh, to be used two-handed. Yeah. So she just puts a drumstick in her mouth, and while holding <laughs> onto that, just biting down on that, she swings with both hands, and a uh, twenty-four will hit. She can also let it fall because it will be preserved through the cold. She's not gonna drop her food on the on the ground. <laughs> okay. Which number is this? Uh, number three. Well, damage. Second hit. Does a 12 hit? 12 does not. Okay. She well. nearly, she nearly uh, l dropped her drumstick and so she interrupted her swing to like catch it in midair and <laughs> bite back down on it. She's got her priorities straight. She does. Okay, Pontifex. You killed the big one, now there's the babies. And again, the fireball is, is a predicament. <laughs> uh, can I get a, uh, a fire, fireball template out here so I can measure it around? What is, uh, what's the radius again? 15? Uh, 20. Oh, then uh, there you go. This is 20. Is it funny? It is. Thread in the needle. <laughs> what the, the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? No. Like it's a sphere. It's not a cube. So this should this should probably work. It looked right, but I wanted to make sure and not just be like, oh, you know, this is good. Uh, is yeah, there? No, this I don't is think fine. there's any world where I can get the other one. Oh wait, that's not the other one. That's Seraphis. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, he'll just, uh, he'll just turn off to the side and rip it. <laughs> because you're a wizard and you're like uh, smart uh, and all that, you you just it it takes you like a second to be like, yeah, this is perfect, and just go for it. And Pip, you can you can feel the heat. Yeah, just... Pip was like in the process of but moving forward. <laughs> when suddenly, <laughs> boom! <laughs> you stop Nobody suddenly. Move. The, the flames licking the tip of your nose, a strand of hair catching on fire. <laughs> oh, right, I need to roll what, Dexes? You know witches burn. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, hey, if Squeak's immune to it, maybe you are too. <laughs> I didn't mean Squeak to is not this. immune to fire. No, Squeak is immune to gold. Oh, okay. Eh, um, whatever. Hello? What's my dexterity? Okay, so on number one I have 18 and on number two I have 13. Uh, so uh, success and fail. So, so 12 damage. and 25. Got it. Both of them also losing the snow. They have just wrapped themselves in and uh, you can no longer see them. Uh, and then it's going to continue to uh, back up a little Um. Is Ar oh, does Arn exist? <laughs> while he's in the dream world? Uh, uh, he... He's not a valid target. He's also not occupying his space in the material plane. Like, you can walk through him and you wouldn't know that he's there. Great. Uh, Arn does see you <laughs> and, like, to him it feels a little odd that, yeah, you, you walk through him, and then you stop the right where he just is. walking backwards and backing away <laughs> from this spooky stuff, and just kind of, like, phases into Auron unknowingly. You don't know it, but somewhere in the, the world of dreams, Auron is like, ah, Professor, Professor! <laughs> Let me move this away. Okay. Um, and I think that's... Uh, not that, not that. Okay, how can I... Mm. 
Yeah, this sucks because sun is right here. Oh, you know what? Let's let's go around Sunny. Uh, has the concept of straight lines ever come up in this campaign? Have we ever like specifically stuck to a grid or just done whatever? Uh, oh, lightning bolt, that type I of mean, thing. Well, for it's example, done like is this, a lot. <laughs> is this a valid Ooh. thing that we've done in our yeah, entire campaign? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't okay. see why not. All right, cool. Uh, that oh, means <laughs> uh, Sunny and Brooke must both make a dexterity saving throw, as right. ice um, is just a shot in a straight line towards the two of you. Okay, okay, okay. Um, for Brooke, <clears throat> ooh, Brooke is fine. Ooh. And for Sunny... Also, Matt, roll a d100. Ooh! Okay, for both of you, it's a success. So you take half this much damage, and you're not... Uh, uh, no additional things happen. So that's... Uh, 19, half, 9. Is that a 13? Uh, 12. Oh? Oh, yeah. Oops. 12. 12 damage? That's what I no, take? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You take nine damage, both of you. Okay. <laughs> the damage is bl uh, bludgeoning, apparently. <clears throat> and as for that D100 roll, uh, I'm gonna roll um, uh, a D10. Okay. Three. Cool. Uh, Sunny, who has her eyes just uh, on this thing that is circling her, and gets blasted with ice, but for the most part, she tanks it. And she sees that this particular um, small figment of magic, it gets a little bit taller. No particular reason, more more snow building up uh, around it. Uh, it remains a medium-sized creature, it's just significantly taller than the other two. Uh, so that's it for this one. And then there is an invisible one. Um... Pontifex is here, he doesn't know about Aaron. There's a child back here, so let's go for that. Uh, straight line, so XR can pip both at to roll deck saves. Matt, roll another D100, please. XR is fine this blow up time. Eventually. 19. It's wiggling, but it's a 19. Nine. You keep rolling in the 10s. Okay. Yep. Be more prepared, I would have gotten more dice. I keep having to roll them multiple times. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Okay. So, 10, 19, 28 points of bludgeoning damage for Pip. Oh, he's pushed 20 feet back. She's here. Damn. And he's Okay, at the same time, uh, Pip, as, as Pip is like being flung forward, Pip looks <laughs> backwards, sends an arm out, and uses telekinetic reprisal. <laughs> okay. Uh, it needs to make a. What does it make? Strength save. 15. Uh, uh, that just succeeds. Does it take half? No, it takes nothing. Aww. Ah. Pip is thrown over here. Oh, I need to. Sorks. Eight points. And, uh, um, the roll was a 19 on the D100. Yeah. The... Okay. Why do you keep means... rolling in the tens, man? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Love that D10 just only lands on ones. All right, ten foot radius centered on the figment of magic. Uh, this is all 
this is all grease. This is all oil. Um, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it's the, the snow is suddenly, and you know what? You can see the thing now too because it's also covered in it. We're gonna change Noted. its color. In fact, it's like yellowish. Gross. Yeah. You little oh. grease golem. <laughs> Oh, oh god, that's too intense. You know what? That's okay. I love it. Um, so it's Arin's turn. Um, yeah. Uh, so nothing. Uh, I guess he's gotten closer to the cabin, and he, you said it looks different. How so? Um, it's a little bit smaller. It looks like it's been built in the same place, but like. Uh, almost as if somebody built it simultaneously to the one in the real world. And so, like, there's slightly... There's small differences, like the uh, the logs of wood that have been stacked together. They come from slightly different plants, and so they look a little bit different. There's one window in that Arin can see that isn't in the real world cabin. The roof is slanted at a slightly different angle. Some plants planted around it are different types altogether. It's like very recognizable, but at the same time, it does feel like a different building. Uh, okay, well, that's something to, to investigate at a little. Uh, then he's. Uh, he can't like interact with non dream world stuff, right? He has to, he has to come back. Uh, correct. Okay, then uh, he's going to uh, move a little bit first. <laughs> let me let me grab. Uh, maybe not that yeah. far. Maybe even just like out a little bit <laughs> and then phase back in. Uh, mm -hmm. Up. Oh, and uh, yeah, professor, we'll you were shots. stepping on my feet. <laughs> I can't see into the dream thing. You got to like explain what you can do after all of this, uh, and then he's gonna shoot this figment too. Okay. Right. Yeah. Oh wait, it does take half damage. It takes five. No, did. <laughs> 16 hits. <laughs> then, think. 13 on Figment 2. Mm hmm. Very still good. Number 2 has taken so much damage. <laughs> yeah, but it still exists. Okay, and then uh, last shot on Figment 2. Oh, wait. Uh, he can see these now. Um, can I have bonus action to the the force thing? Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, let's do that. Uh so I'll 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 do an extra D. Mm hmm And maybe that'll steal the deal. Another five points. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, well. Yes, but barely. Now he's gonna shoot it again. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that that it's Uh, and then this includes the force. I think force is just a one attack rule. Uh, oh, yeah, you're like right. Uses the next time he hits it. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so just... So that's actually 11. 11 oh, yeah. my gosh. You couldn't be any closer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but still alive. Uh, and then I think that is it. This thing is in, it's in Greece, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, he's going to move a little bit to, like, here. And that's it. All right. Before we move on to this boy's turn, uh, Exarch will... Uh, this one is invisible. Uh... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Can't get anywhere near this. 
for that one. Um, he's going to help Pip get up. Oh. Unless he's unconscious. He's not unconscious, right? No, he's not unconscious. Okay, yeah, no, he'll just pull him up to his He feet. might act like him <clears throat> first. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness, oh. are you okay? Oh, thank you. He hears from back to his left. <laughs> to his... Oh. <laughs> Silly Pip, now's not the time for ventriloquism. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you're no longer prone. Oh, that's just going to be him. And Luzan... Um, mm, how do we put this? This magic is now unstable. Expect unpredictable bursts of magic whenever they act. And you pretty much already seen that. Uh, yeah. So, Matt. D100. It's turn of number one. Oh, he's right here. Hey, look at here. Thank you, Exarch. Man, I and just then, really have a bad yes. feeling for some reason. <laughs> oh my god. I'm cursed. <laughs> just, just both it's of you getting iced again. <laughs> So it's wiggling again, but I think this one is just a 10. What? Right? Net. Uh, yeah, what that's a 10. Okay. <laughs> that's four what in a heck? roll in, in the 10s. Yeah. yeah, it keeps doing All right. It. Pip and Axark both have to roll a deck save. 19. And on a 10. Oh, shit. Oh. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> Fireball. No, it's magic missile at fifth level. Oh! So it's on a three darts plus four. On it's seven darts. Um, this is going to be spread out because it is the pigment's choice. So seven targets: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. With squeak, perfect. Wow. There's seven. Oh wait, there's also a Luzan. Um. Maybe they wouldn't prioritize the little squeak. Ah, so, an Exarch. Um, it's two damage. On Pip, it's five damage. Uh, I haven't even rolled for the ice thing yet. We'll get to that. Um, on Arin, it's two damage. So this is all force damage. Um... The range is 120 feet, so everybody is in it. Pontifex. I'll Five. just shield spell. He knows okay. magic missiles. Alright, yeah. you don't take any damage. Sunny. <laughs> Two. Brook. Three. And I need to write... Oh, I need to write down on Luzan, which is four. Now also, XR and Pip, do you already roll your deck save? Yeah, it was a Is 19. Is it a 19? Okay, that's a success. Exarch. Uh, it's also a success. Uh, but it is a lot of dice. Sorry, do I roll a uh, sorrow for dex save or no? You just, no, you just take the damage. Magic okay. Missile is just an automatic hit. Mm, oops. Okay, the ice damage? Totally 17, and it's halved, so you both take 8. And you're not pushed uh, back, and you're not prone. Uh, uh, that was an eventful turn for this particular figment of magic. A uh, brook! Um, Luzan said that there is going to be um, unpredictable magic, and then everybody's immediately hit by all these like snowballs. Okay, I will pick up my sword. Yep, it's on the ground directly ahead of you, so it's just a object and interaction. Then... Uh, Aaron mm. needs to roll concentration on haste, if you haven't already. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. I, I completely forgot to even check. You're fine. Should be the magic missile. What did he get I hit think... for? Oh, uh, I don't know at this point. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Sorry, I completely forgot he was one of the targets. I, it might have been three. It feels like a three. I was three. 
For plus go, three, Sonia with... was two. Okay, yeah, let's go with three. All right, uh, he's, yeah, he's fine. Okay, all right, mm. you can continue with your turn. Zoom. Zoom. You could use your hasted action. Oh, wait, no, no, you have, you have plenty. You have 60 feet of movement. You can get. Oh, I have yeah. to get here? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, here. okay, okay. Perfectly fine. Okay. Three attacks incoming on this on this boy. Mm hmm. Always advantage. Okay. Oh. 13 misses, though. Oh. You're going second like a one, little bit too one. far, too fast. You're not used to it, and you like slid on on the snow. <laughs> but you pick yourself back up, um, hoping that Sunny didn't see it. She did see it, and you swing. <laughs> Twenty six hits. Of course. Thirteen damage. All right. One more hit, maybe. Mm -hmm. Twenty three okay. hits. Okay. And the 19. Very good. Excellent. Okay, yes. You're also wor you're working on dispelling also the shape of this uh, particular figment. It's the only one you can... Um, like, one has disappeared, one is covered in grease. Uh, this one is still, uh, still has a snow-covered familiar shape and you just go for it. And <laughs> chop, chop, chop. Pieces of snow fly everywhere. Um, Sunny's trying very hard to not get any snow on her drumstick. Um, and that's it? Any bonus actions? Mm, no. Okay, then Pip, you're on your feet, but barely, I can yeah. see. Yeah, in the last six seconds, Pip has been... <laughs> tossed uh, around a bunch! Been tossed, tossed over the snow, rolled into the into the into the snow exarc picks him up he's been hit by by this thing snagged by a magic missile and now pip's just <laughs> screaming he lets out a raspy <laughs> scream hides behind arn and sends out a create bonfire on this grease man <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay yeah you cling onto arn's cloak you kind of pull it to protect yourself behind it and like you're beginning to strangle him unknowingly and you just aim some fire right over here. And this is Grease. So he just fucking explodes. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> you know what? Let's just do half the damage of a fireball for funsies. Sure. <laughs> I don't remember. Fireballs are 88, maybe? Uh, 86. Uh, yes, 86. So roll 46 and uh, roll a, a deck save. Which is 14. disastrous on a nine. Oh, this is the one that's super hurt. He dies. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> you just engulf it in flames and you don't see it anymore. And for a moment, like, you, you know, that that's not necessarily a, a, a sign that it's gone, but you don't see, like, the snow being moved um, around it. You don't feel like a a weird breeze of arcane magic ahead of you. You think it's gone. Uh, bonus action, Pip says, get away from that thing! And is going to use uh, his uh, telekinetic shove and try and pull Exarch closer towards uh, towards him. <laughs> if he's he goes, willing. whoa! <laughs> and he's pulled. <laughs> All right. Keep landing the final hits on these. Okay, did you move his mini? I did. Okay, then uh, squeak time. Uh, see anything invisible? Mm. Is that a thing he can do? Nope, that's what okay. the cat can do. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah died yeah, right. instantly. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Well, I mean, just goes to show who the who the real big boss is, you know. <laughs> uh, Meanwhile. All right. Camera panning over to inside a cabin where Tech and Virion are having their own game of dragon <laughs> chess. Sweeping the floors. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's one of those lo-fi uh, 
music <laughs> videos. <laughs> oh. Uh, Squeak casts a magic missile on figment number three. Ooh. Roll Firing the, the missiles through his armor. Pew, 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 pew. This is very different. They're not snowballs. It's actual missiles. Ten. Ten. Uh, number three. Oh, very good, very good. That's, Still standing. That's the there. end of the turn. Sunny time. <clears throat> Sunny. I think he will try to hit it. She has advantage. Oh yeah. Eighteen hits, but feel free to to crit, crit fish. She has. Crit fishing. Yeah, she has a very good chance of critting. Ah, oh, close. Well. Okay. okay. So twenty-eight hits. From damage, and then attack again. Ooh. Dang. Actually, oh, fifteen kills it. She's strong. She is strong. Okay, what now? She will never get there in time. <laughs> she, she just takes a, takes a takes break. Takes a bite. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm, well, job well done. Back to work. <laughs> and back to work. That's it. Effects. <laughs> uh, it's just the That's one it. figment left, right? Thank you. Yeah, the one you cannot see. But you did see a bunch of snowballs come from this general area. I don't recall the last time I had to see what I was blowing up. Mm. Oh, it must have been a, a few levels back. Um. <laughs> uh, Wait, let me. I forgot to check if this is a touch spell or not. It is. Uh... Yeah. Well, we got more fireballs. <laughs> we got fireballs. Step we got up. fireballs. I can cast <laughs> this like a lot. So. Uh... Yeah, let's just do it. I'm gonna fireball the last one. Okay. You saw the where the like snowballs came absurd, from. So like, over here? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you saw where the snowballs came from, so you're just like, well, as long as it... Uh, oh, that's one less. As long as you don't hit uh, X-Arc, uh, you figure it's fine. But yeah, and just for fun, I'm gonna cast it through the mind, so it's it's coming from the sky. <laughs> it's like a <laughs> just, meteor smashing it's a into the snow. Storm. Like Dang, yeah, you can do that? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, last time Freaking I tried to do the mind thing, it was drone strikes? Dragon's <laughs> breath stuff. But yeah, I can fly this thing around and just rain hell on things. <laughs> but yeah, just quick fire. Uh, For the second time in a row, Exarch just has this explosion directly, like in his face. <laughs> he has to put out his pelts. That's my boy. <laughs> Ah, dexterity. Nah, it's a natural too. Okay. Boom. 27. Boom. Okay. It, it has taken like almost no damage thus far, this particular one. So it survives. Um, you, you see bits of... Uh, gosh. You see an outline, you know, that is not filled by the flames. You kind of get a feel for where this thing is before all the fire goes out. Uh, you know you hit it. Yep. Anything else from you, you crazy man? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, now I think he's, now there's one left, now he's actually going to be approached menacingly and slowly. <laughs> Austin makes a oh, really yeah, good point sure. that, like, paper pulled that <laughs> Sark out of the blast <laughs> While zone. While the fireball is, like, charging up in the sky and gets launched, <laughs> like, mid-travel distance, Pip's like, nope, and pulls Dad out of the way. <laughs> Pip has seen this blood. plenty of times. He knows what's going on. <laughs> Pip's just got a thousand yards of <laughs> 
<laughs> so many fireballs. <laughs> Pip has lost his own parents and he's just I'm trying next. to watch out for pontifexes. <laughs> I have so many more. <laughs> okay, our in uh, time. Yep. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's just gonna well. Can he get there? He can. Uh, he's gonna run up to this thing and uh, let's do the swords. He's just okay. swinging. It will at be nothing. a disadvantage. Yeah. How does he know where to go? I just described like the outline of an empty space uh, that was filled by the flames. Cool. Uh, yeah, he, he, he can't see it, but uh, his to hit on the short sword is like laughably higher than the bow, even. What? <laughs> his chance to hit is like absurd. So How? I, I think unless this is a net one, oh, it literally can't miss. That's a it's typo. A plus 18. That's a typo. That's supposed to be plus eight. Okay. I'll have to fix that. Okay. Was it like oh, 18? He'll, he'll I had 18? not. Well, I had not noticed I did a plus eighteen. It's supposed to be. I had, I even have it writing like the the code uh, for. for... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, then, sorry. Then scratch the running up with the sword. He's just gonna shoot it instead. <laughs> okay, I fixed like, oh, it. Can't really miss with this. So. I I fixed it. So I I might have to pull him out of your card sheet and then back in for it to update. It's supposed to be a plus eight. Ooh, He's a range boy. He might actually boy. miss. 14 misses. Yeah, how about that? A miss. Oh, <laughs> this one is plus 18. You can't oh, hit uh, invisible it. things? Come on, Aaron. He'll do his planar <laughs> warrior thing, too. So, see Second try. Hits. Yeah. He Incredible. does the thing but we're... Oh, no! Okay. Oh, well, it's a good thing he's an elf, though, right? No? <laughs> He what? doesn't have elven eye curiosity. Uh, yeah, it was a joke. <laughs> it's canonical, all elves. That's the only reason to be born <laughs> all an elf, elves. so you can take that feat. Okay. Aaron gives it his best to try, but he, he can't shoot what he can't see. The air is just doing crazy stuff with all the flames and, like, you know, melting the <laughs> snow. And there's, like, just, just weird, weird currents going on. It's throwing off the heartstring bow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just totally the explosion's fault. Yeah. Okay. Um, on initiative twenty. Um. <laughs> well, let's see if Exarch can hit anything. He just kind of all the arrows fly by him. Um. Uh, you know what? We can do it because they share initiative. We can do things in the opposite order. Uh, as he, he, the arrows fly by him and by him, and he goes roughly in this direction. Um, Luzan just straight up points at this spot, and she says, "Over there." And uh, uh, for all of you, you would gain advantage on hitting this. It is cancelled by the invisibility, so you get straight rolls unless you have anything else going on where you wouldn't have disadvantage in the first place um so exarch can just do a straight roll and still miss oh and hit on the second one though well axe attack he hit something yay it's the first time a little bit of damage Um, so he swings once and then he like he adjusts his aim and swings again and he can feel himself hitting something solid and he looks over here and he says uh, he, uh, I don't know he smiles and says thanks love and that's uh, their turn oh, and then the figment oh. goes so wholesome mm -hmm. oh, I can never Hit more than two people at once. Okay. It doesn't want to leave Exarch's reach, so it's gonna be like this. Pontifex and Exarch are going to be targets uh, of uh, its explosion of eyes. Uh, which is over here. So both of you need to roll dexterity saves. Uh, Dennis, roll d100 for me since uh, Matt will be busy. Okay. Just two d10s. Yeah, yeah. Because maybe you won't roll a 10. <laughs> maybe you won't. 
Good luck. 29. <laughs> it's, oh, it's that's 29. the worst one. <laughs> I know. That's the worst one. I wanted to do this. that. I wanted, okay. <laughs> but I wanted it to be in the tens. Exarch passes, Pontifex fails. Uh, meaning the Pontifex, in addition to the damage, will be pushed back 20 feet and knocked prone. Ouch. That is the worst outcome. Which is uh, 20 feet... Uh, like, whoa, like that. That's his what whole the... movement speed. <laughs> no kidding. What, uh, what damage type is this? Uh, this is bludgeoning. Okay. Uh oh. It's just like physically the eye is hitting you. Uh, it is 20 points of damage. The professor is unconscious. Um, for, that hasn't happened in a while. Yeah, of an incredibly long time. Uh, I think he, since he got gunned yeah, by that's the right. gnomes. I think it's the last say time he's been the, knocked gunned. Say hi to the drow friend. Okay. No so, oh, oh, hello? Ah, there we go. Uh, 29. Going unconscious in front of your parents. How embarrassing. <laughs> okay. But I think I was pulled out of myself. I need to do the slightest, tiniest bit of retcon because I <sighs> cannot see the future, but Luzan can. So she pointed at this spot and she said, over there. And then immediately after that, as Exarch is hitting it, she points at a different spot and says, it will be over there. <laughs> because uh, on a 29, uh, the figment teleports, and it's gonna go right here. Oh, Ooh, one more. Forward. That's helpful. Uh, so Brook has no idea, but he, oh. because it's invisible, but he looks back at Luzan, pointing straight in front of him. And hey, what would you know? It's your turn. Um, what do I roll for concentration? Because I think I got a hit. With a the, constitution the save. Constitution save. All right, let's see if I can even see it before. If you make it, then you'll have advantage on your rolls because Luzan gives you advantage. Yep. Oh, oh. well, well. <laughs> well. Okay. So you have straight rolls. Uh-huh. Let's do it. Fifteen hits. Oh, yeah. That's the armor class. Ooh. Wow. All of these attacks are better than my crit. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay. Uh, also, this is like the second time you guys have taken one of these one hit point away from death. So keep keep, keep it up. If you hit it okay, again. Okay, okay, okay. Uh... All right. How would you like to do this? Well, I think I would slice it or try to slice it in half try to cover the biggest range so i can make sure that i hit it and eventually slice through it and you do you just slice right through it you're cutting through literal magic and as long as you're close enough to sunny to be able to use your powers you can do this and you can do even crazier things she didn't see the killing blow she was too busy Finishing Come finally on. a chicken leg. Uh, but here is uh, your trophy. We're officially out of combat. Pip immediately runs up to the professor and pops a healing potion into his mouth. Exarch also immediately running his way. Luzan, more on like a. <laughs> Luzan doesn't a give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> he knows he'll be fine. <laughs> uh, you heal seven hit points. What effects? Uh, in Exarch just pulls you up on your feet with a strength that you you don't know in your own bones. Uh, did we win? What happened? Uh, did I get shot again? I think I think we did. We did win. Uh, Luzan, are we good? Just gives like a silent nod. Yeah, we're good. 
Yeah, you kind of did get shot again, actually. Okay. Where's Where's the gnome? Um, <laughs> Professor. Why, what? <laughs> I think I think you hit your head on the way down. <laughs> oh. Hey, oh, hey, Dad. How's it? How's it? How's it hanging? <laughs> 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 he he like rubs a hand on your on the back of your head. Oh, he feels oh. the scars. Hmm. Three dude. Uh, yeah, they're mm. pretty. Okay. Pretty gnarly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so he does this just very, just with a gentleness, you know, with the, uh, um, just this like. Smile where he's happy that you're okay, but also just eyes filled with worry and concern. And he, he says, oh, oh, my tadpole, I'm, uh, oh, I got so worried. And then he hugs you and you notice that he noticed something, but made no effort to comment on it. it he seems to decide that now is not the time nor the place. Oh, okay, I think it is coming back. I saw we defeated the, uh, the, my face. Everything is good. Or are we done? Can we go back inside? Uh, uh, I think so. Hi, Mom. Next, he <laughs> looks back to see like Luzan already had him towards the cabin. Okay, yeah, Pontifex is going to start limping through the snow uh, in his little manifest mind, which doesn't go away when he's not unconscious. He has to actually die. Uh, <laughs> it's just going to hover so. on down behind him and follow behind him. Little floating spectral UFO. <laughs> I'm just going to put it in your bowl because I'm afraid of it rolling away. <laughs> yep. Uh, and this thing. Uh, you want to always have this, right? Yeah, yeah. With you? Okay, here I you have, go. Uh, I have two of them. Uh, this uh, is also One for the yours? mind and one for the tressum. Okay, then this yeah, one yeah, goes in the bag. There we go. Lovely, take back your minis away from this table that I'm about to clear. Uh, I'll take these two. And uh, uh, all your... The remains of your tressum. He'll be fine. He's at the beach. <clears throat> what is the opposite of the beach? The desert. She's at the desert. I don't know. They're pretty similar. That's just they're both just sand. The woods. Yeah. <laughs> the farm. She's at the farm. Oh, that's actually really sad. No. <laughs> it's really wholesome and sad at the same time. <laughs> the the the, bird, the owl mm. cat is at the farm. Uh, Pontifex, you are mostly carried just by your father. Uh, he, like, grabs one of your arms, pulls it onto his shoulders, and he helps you with uh, getting back to the cabin so you don't have to put too much weight on your tired, hurt legs. Let me close these things. I don't need that anymore. I don't need that anymore. And close that. Okay, good. We're good. <clears throat> um... And the moment the, the first ones among you reach uh, the cabin and you step in the door, having been left uh, just ajar, uh, you find that uh, Tech and Virion, they welcome you in. Um, the table has been cleared, which seems to break Sunny's heart. Clearly she was hoping for, for more of the leftovers. Um, everything has been, uh, yes, been cleared and cleaned. And uh, um, now on the table, where Luzan is setting them, there's a handful of, uh, well, they look like healing potions. They're in just like particularly, you know what? It's like a picture. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> Bloody fun, <that's> so funny. <laughs> <laughs> she made the healing potion punch ahead of time. <laughs> 
<laughs> Stop it! You can, you can just imagine the Exarch much. watching her make this, being like, uh, we, what's we gonna, gonna happen? Be okay? <laughs> <laughs> They'll be now. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Anyone who wants to partake of the punch, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Can can um, just heal back to four hit points. We don't Pip. have to to roll for it. Mm. Refills. Pip refills his used potion vial. With some... <laughs> four hit points. You know what? Said. Yes. Nice. Uh, yeah, back to four hit points. It's not a short rest. You're just regaining your hit points. Yeah. Oh. Um. We all sit around the table, explaining to to a couple of concerned the te te tech and Virion, um, what just it was happened. So much fire. <laughs> um, as for Luzana herself, she kind of just sneaks out of one of the other doors uh, into a room you haven't seen yet. Well, that was something. It was something. A bit of a more um, animated meeting than I had expected. So can we talk now? Right, is it safe? That whole business was to get the eyes off of me. I suppose it is. Still not entirely sure what that was about, but... Do you feel like... Ooh. Um, you still feel like talking, Pontifex, yes? Yeah, yes. Okay. He's uh, um, sort of the whole reason we are here. Well, then you and I are going to have a private conversation, but as for the rest of you, why don't you all come downstairs with me? Downstairs? Uh, come on, this way. He stands up and he pushes open the same door that Luzan just went through. And in this other section of the cabin, you find that there is a set of stairs that goes straight down. Alright, Brooke gets up. Okay, I lost my place in my notes. What well, could go wrong? <laughs> Just going into a stranger's basement. Anything for point effects to f learn the truth. <laughs> That's more ominous. <laughs> <laughs> As you step down these stairs, you can feel the temperature rising. It's getting warmer. And at the end of the stairs, you find a floor that is dedicated entirely to what can only be described as a giant bathtub. <laughs> the reason why uh, the air is warmer in here, it becomes quite obvious. You can see steam rising from the water. Around the pool, you spot small shelves full of soft towels and robes, all neatly folded. Nearby, there's a table uh, laden with an assortment of fragrant oils, colorful bath salts, and herbal infusions. There's lit candles scattered throughout the area. Um, it's It reminds you of uh, the restroom in Orange uh, Tower, in a way, but just... Really big bathtub. All of you could be in it and just swim around, and it would not be crowded at all. Exarch gestures at this and says, uh, The rest of you, uh, feel free to make yourselves comfortable. If you want more snacks from upstairs, you, you can go ahead. And, and Sun immediately runs back up the steps. Doesn't even <coughs> let him finish. <laughs> um, and the rest of the party is <clears throat> invited to enjoy the pool, while Exarch points at another set of stairs that goes further down and says... You and I should go talk. Yes, we should. Uh, and he will. He will go. 
yeah, the two of you go further down. At some point, the stairs are interrupted by uh, just a closed door. Uh, the further down you go, as you approach this door, there is a scent of damp stone and forgotten dreams. Beyond the door, which Exarch proceeds to close and lock behind him, you find an underground laboratory, pristine yet empty, a place untouched by the hands of time. There's this strange sense of wistfulness, as if the place has been prepared for grand experiments that never came to pass. There's counters made of gleaming marble that stretch along the walls, each one untouched. The surfaces otherwise cl clean bear layers of dust that has settled over the centuries. Jars and vials, all neatly arranged, they glimmer in the dim light of the candles and they are all empty. Shelves with no scrolls nor books stretch all the way to the ceiling, waiting patiently for the weight of knowledge that never arrived. Glass beakers and delicate instruments rest in perfect order, never having known the touch of a scientist's hand. A lone desk sits at the center of the room. One of two chairs pulled out where Luzan is sitting. It feels like the very walls are holding... <laughs> wow, I'm Dennis. Sorry, my <laughs> I'm for bed. It feels like the very walls are holding their breath in here. On your shoulders, you feel the silent weight of unrealized potential, dreams left unchased, curiosity and wonder long gone. What is all of this? You are scientists. We used to be. Before, uh... Well, before things changed. We actually never did any research on... Uh, you're on... Uh, Lidaria. We just... I suppose I built it because I thought that someday we would, but... We never did. Those days are long behind us now. I don't, uh, I don't entirely believe you. I, I know what it is to uh, decide to leave certain pursuits behind, but they never really go away, and you wouldn't have kept this if it was truly gone. So I ask again, what is all of this? What uh, did Would you, you like? Would you like to sit down? Do I need to? I think you will. Yeah, he'll, he'll pull up a chair. You sit right in front of Luzan, who hasn't reacted much to your arrival. But the moment you do sit down, that's the moment when she speaks up. And she says... This is one more chance for you to change your mind. You have lived an entire life without us. What does it matter if we talk now? Uh, because I don't believe there is a, ever an excuse to choose naivety. One should always know. And yet there is. There is one reason. Your father and I have learned something that... broke our spirits. We may have made a promise a long time ago that we'd tell you if you ever showed up, but... I have... to offer you... To turn back because I want you to. And 
and I uh, respectfully uh, have to uh, decline. I came all of this way for a reason and uh, whatever this revelation could be, I assure you both, you might not know how this feels, but I can promise you it will not equate to the anguish of feeling unwanted for 400 years. So, uh, please, enlighten me. Exarch does look away. He seems pained, despite trying not to show it. You have yet to see any emotion on Luzan's face. She is like all other Vidalkin you have encountered in your life, as few as they were. Exarch actually being the unusual one in this circumstance, and yet the most human. Luzan shakes her head, as if like still not really accepting your answer. She holds up a finger and says, For your father and I, this option was never available. We found out what we found out over a vast period of time. It was the culmination of our centuries of research. For you, however, there is an option that we did not have. Even though we may speak right now, if you really desire it, if at the end of this you change your mind, that knowledge, that conversation, I can take it out of your head. Erase it as if it never happened. Even after we do speak, you can still walk out of this room and not know if at the end you were to make that choice. Good to know. Is that, does that conclude the preamble? Or are we getting to the to the part yet? Because uh, I've been patient for a long time, but uh, now that I'm here, uh, it, it is feeling condescending at this point. Even if you all could not handle it, I assure you, I will, if for nothing else than out of spite. Fine. So I would uh, appreciate it if we could get on with it. Maybe let me make my decision afterwards. Then... We shall tell you. And that's where I'll end the session. But, <laughs> just for everybody Ooh, else, fucker. Matt and I <laughs> are gonna keep talking. I figured oh. you would. Oh. I thought we're going, you would. We're going uh -oh. to be offline. We're not going to be on Twitch. I will record this and like perhaps in like in the future, at the end of the campaign or whenever the time is right, I, like this can also be shared. But for the time being, what the conversation in this underground laboratory is exclusively for Pontifex. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, That's... wait! I I cast, I cast. Do I have this guy self? Uh, yeah, I just, oh, <laughs> we both disguise self. I send Squeak it's down to listen. I can listen in for one hour. <clears throat> it's useless. She sees the future. She sees. She would know. So. Uh, I'm going to say goodbye to Austin and Dennis specifically. I'm going to uh, oh, save this. And, uh, 195. Oh, here we go. And uh, um, yeah, we're going to be to go offline on on Twitch uh, right now. Bye. I look forward Bye. to the conspiracy theories that Austin comes up with for the recap oh, based on what this conversation have, could entail. Yeah. You have no idea the things that I've already. You can just make it up. Telling. <laughs>